Hello and welcome to a special edition of Faith and Friends. I am joined today by Pastor Kim Lyons and we're going to talk about a special event that is taking place July 14th through the 15th at In Faith Ministries in Lima. It's a women's conference embracing God's glory. Own it. Pastor Kim, I love those last two words, own it. Own it. God has put us on this earth for an important purpose. Yes, and he has. You are creating a great opportunity for all the area women yeah. coming up in just a few weeks. Yeah. I'm so excited about it. July the 14th and 15th, we're going to have an incredible conference. And uh, the mindset for Own It is that God's given us life and he's given it to us abundantly, more abundantly. And it's up to us by faith to grab a hold of it mm -hmm. and to own it, to claim it and to hold on to it. So I'm hoping this conference, the 14th and the 15th, will allow women to step up to another level of faith and possess and grab a hold of everything that God has promised for their lives. Now this is open to women all around this all area mm -hmm. and all over, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, we have people coming from Pennsylvania, West Virginia. I think some are coming from uh, North Carolina. They're coming from all over uh, just to be a part of this conference. It is uh, exciting to think about this happening right here in, in Lima. Lima. Right here in Lima. These ladies don't have to drive yes. very far to go to this. What was, what was the passion? The that passion got behind it was to bring women from all denominations to one place and to glorify God and to lift him up. And I'm really desiring that we do more of that, that we come together and just, just worship God in spirit and in truth together, regardless mm. of what church you attend. It's all about Jesus Christ and him being glorified. So that's the whole purpose and the drive for that in Lima. Amen, that's great. We're gonna talk more about that in just a moment. Okay. But first, I wanna let you all know at home, we are talking about a women's conference today, but you're gonna have an opportunity to hear short segments from the three main speakers. And uh, let me tell you, it's not just for women. These individuals have some powerful messages to speak and they will impact you, whether you are a man or a woman. So stick with us for the next 30 minutes for some great inspiration, some encouragement, and a reminder of who God made us to be and how we are yes. to live our everyday lives. But first, let's take a look at some scripture on this uh, special show this week. Psalm 29, three through four and verse 11 says, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Peace, unity, the powerful voice of God. Yes. Those are all things that I anticipate to be involved in this conference. Oh yes, and you know, you have to fight for it. You know, mm -hmm. the scripture talks about fight the good fight of faith. You have to fight for your peace. You have to, you have to fight for your joy. And, and really the fight is willing to do uh, what God has told you to do and just grab it. We can be happy if we choose to be happy. Uh, we can have peace if we choose to. And so I just love the whole idea that we have all this power of the Lord within us to obtain. And all we have to do is trust God and have that faith to believe it. It can be hard on yeah, days when things aren't going well it can. and the family members are breaking down and all kinds of things aren't working out, but yes. yet God is sovereign and is strong. He is. Uh, the other day I had to remind myself so many oppositions was coming up against me at, with the church. You know, we're pastors and then uh, our daughter was getting married and just all of these kind of things was, was happening. And, and I had to encourage myself in the Lord. And, and demand peace, that I was mm. gonna stay in the peace zone regardless of what happened, what's going on. And because I chose to do that, God's power was released mm. in me to be able to walk in that peace. You defeated the devil that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did real good. Well, <laughs> July 14th and 15th, defeating the devil is just one of the check boxes to happen and some incredible speakers. Oh, Talk God. to me about Dr. Medina Pullins. Oh, Dr. Medina Pullins, she's an evangelist who's gone all over the world. Uh, she came last year to our conference and she was just, uh, had a pure heart and she uh, preached the word you know, with clarity. And our women grew so much from it. Mm. So she's a powerful, she's a young lady. I think she's in her 30s and God's just using her in a great way. And I thought, you know what? 
God, if I can get her here to Lima, I believe that she's going to uh, be used as a vessel to touch lives. And so I'm excited about her coming. All right. Well, you have an opportunity to hear Dr. Medina as well. Here's a short segment from one of her previous talks. She is coming to this women's conference. Here is Dr. Medina Pullings. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Psalms 139. I feel God in this place. Hallelujah. See, God loves us so much that he tells us, he tells us the truth. He tells us the truth, you know. After we get, how do we know we've had a real encounter with God when we get off the floor and we do something different? When the woman that this is what Shiloh is about, I mean, the, the worship and the word and, and that encounter with the presence of God, the woman at the well, when she had an encounter with Jesus, she didn't go looking for another man. She said, come see a man. <laughs> you have an encounter with God. Huh? Saul had an encounter. He had an encounter with God. I mean, he, he had an encounter with Jesus. I mean, he was going around persecuting the Christians and felt right about it. He was strong and wrong, killing folks. I mean, taking them out. And, and then he had a real encounter, Pam. And then all of a sudden, he wasn't doing that no more. You could be in, in adultery and have an encounter with God. And you, and, and you tell that person that you was meeting up with, we can't meet no more. It's over. Why? Because I had an encounter with God. The liar lies no more. The thief, come on, steals no more. Hallelujah. Because we had an encounter with God. Yes, Lord. See, God wants to get something to you. I don't know why he had me mention in those times, but he wants to get something to you. And he don't want you to block him. Don't be provisional. I don't block him. Come and make it from this day forward. And some of you going to go right to your pastor and say, Pastor, uh, I want you to know from this day forward, you, you, you can count on me to honor God, to bring what belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't let the basket just pass by you and you wave over it. Put something in it. Somebody looking at me like, I got two heads. That scripture, the Bible says, when thou goest into the house of the Lord, bring it up. Psalms 139, this is getting real funny. Okay. I will confess and praise you, for you are fearful and wonderful, and for the awful wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your works, and that my inner self knows right well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. How precious and weighty also are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the sum of of them and it goes on to say that they cannot even be numbered and so we want to share with you on today as this has been all week and long about the purpose and the destiny that God has called you to to be a higher expression of him in the earth and so when we look here in the scripture we see uh, David speaking and, and talking about how God when he created him he created him in secret that is something right there that would just get you interested to want to know what shall it be. Even, uh, especially in the older days, when someone became pregnant, you know, it was the mystery of, is it a girl or is it a boy? Now you can go and get the sonograms and, you know, and find out, okay, something going on here is a girl or it's a boy. But it's a mystery there that, that is yet to be revealed. Well, I want you to know that beyond uh, just your mom birthing you and finding out that, Hey, it's a boy or it's a girl. Mm -mm. And God knew exactly what he was doing. Boy, girl. Mm -mm. And so, so. And people try to introduce other things. And then they say, you know, I was born that way. No problem with that. Folks was born liars. Come on, cheaters. Huh? Just be born again.
I'm sorry. I'm part of the remnant group. I still believe holiness is right. And we can't create our own way. There's only one way to God. Got many different paths. Your broad, broad street to take you to hell. Y'all quiet up in here. See, the enemy dinging and all kind of stuff out there in front of believers now, in front of Christians and especially preachers. And every preacher, you got to check them every, every, every couple of years and find out whether they still believe what they said they believe. Because some of them don't believe what they used to believe. And now they have all this inclusion stuff and, and they allow when those that are personalities on television to introduce a new God to them. Somebody say the devil is a liar. And that's why God has Shiloh. And that's why God has you to be a solution to a modern ill, to a problem in the society. And so God brought you here even on this weekend to jumpstart you into your future. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you something. The mundane that held you down, the stuff of just average everyday life that, that served as an interruption to distract you from the main thing that God has called you to do, that thing is being put under. It is being destroyed. It, in other words, it's not that the same old things won't happen, but it won't work on you no more. God is making you like an eagle. You are rising above it. You're, you are above anything petty. You're going to be focused on your assignment. This church is united. This church is going over, hallelujah, into the new thing. Come on, it's an Isaiah 43, 19 moment. Behold, I will do a new thing in you. Now it shall spring. Oh. All right, that's just a short snippet from Dr. Medina Pollings. You can find more from her on YouTube or you can see her live. She is coming to the Embracing God's Glory Own It Women's Conference July 14th and 15th at In Faith Ministries here in Lima. And you can go to their website or you can call them to register for the event. There's the information on the screen. 225-8871 is the phone number or you can go on their website and you can register that way. That's just one of the three main speakers. Let's talk about Real Talk Kim, because yes. she is coming as well. She is, she is a phenomenal speaker. She's had a lot of tragedies in her life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think she was uh, abused and uh, was divorced. She just has a lot of history and healing that I believe will be very, very strategic for the women here uh, in Lima, Ohio, and those who will come. Her real talk is her passion about how God brought her through and how he has positioned her now to help mm -hmm. other women heal. So, I, love, I love the fact that she is completely willing to be herself. Yes. Um, yes, she, you know who God has called her to be. She's not going to waver from that. She's not, and she's different. I mean, her style is different. Yeah. Her approach is different. Uh, she can sing. She can preach. She ministers. I think the combination of gifts that's in her is going to be a blessing to the women here to help them just be embrace yourself. Be be okay with who God created mm. you to be, and be happy with it. That's right. Well, here's your opportunity to hear, see, real talk, Kim, as well. Here's a short segment from Pastor Kim Pothier, Real Talk Kim. Let me remind you of Paul and Silas in the midnight hour, beaten black and blue, thrust into the inner prison, chains, chained hands and feet. The Bible says they prayed and sang praises to God and God shook the prison off its foundation and the doors off their hinges and every prisoner bands were loosened. What? Come on, Judah, praise. There's power in your praise. God said last night, prophesy a new chapter. He said to tell you this is your season of restitution, restoration. He said this is your season for a new anointing. And this anointing is going to destroy the yokes in your life. And this anointing is going to unlock a new chapter and a new season of restitution and restoration. He said this new level of anointing is not coming on everyone. He's a good, good father, but he ain't going to force you to do nothing. He's a good, good father. Then you're going to be mad, huh? Because a lot of you mad because God ain't done what you thought he would do, but you didn't prepare for it. 
And then you're mad at God. The greatest thing that I know about God, it took me to 36 years and many, many storms I created on my own to finally put my hands out wide and say, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, withholding nothing, every dream. Every dead dream that had fallen on the wayside, God, I surrender. I'm not even going to go try to fix it. I'm not even going to try to stabilize what you're trying to shake me free from. I'm going to stop knocking on the door that's closed, God, and trust that whatever's behind it's not for me. And you say, but the Bible says to knock and the door will be open. But you want his will to be open. If you've been knocking for 15 years and that door ain't open, that ain't your door. Because he's not a mean, mean father. You've been knocking on that same door for a year. You mad at God because that door ain't open. It ain't your door. Your door is exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask. Or think. You're paralyzed on a door that's too small for you. He said this new level of anointing is not coming to everyone. It's not coming on the murmurs and the complainers. It's not coming on the moaners and the groaners. It's not coming on the critical and the judgmental. It's not coming on the religious and self-righteous. It's not coming on the condescending. It's not coming on the hypocritical. It's not coming to the lazy and indifferent. But this new anointing for our next chapter and the new chapter is coming on the hungry and thirsty. It's coming on those who love God and hate sin. It's coming on the passionate. It's coming on the praiders. Praisers. But this new anointing is right there. Right there. But see, the enemy's got your tongue with disappointment, despair. You can't even utter the name Jesus. You lay in your bed like your body weighs a million pounds because of disappointment, because of expectation that didn't happen. And now you ain't got no expectation or faith at all because of things that you thought he should have done and he didn't do. Now you don't believe in him at all. You're like, I don't even really know if there is a God. You've even been looking at astrology trying to figure out who God is. But you ain't opened your mouth one time to begin to say, Jesus, I need to hear you right now, God. I'm not leaving this room until you talk to me. I want this stuff off of me. I want this generational curses or depression off of me. I want this just the, the, the anger and the bitterness that I have towards that ex that walked out of I want it gone, God. I want these shackles off of me so I can move forward because I know that I cannot be used greater than the place that I forgive at. Just like Judah brought Joseph up out of the pit, praise is going to take you into your next chapter. Praise is the inter introduction of your new chapter. God says, if you'll praise him, he will start a new chapter in your life today. He said, if you'll praise him like you already are there and praise him on credit, he will turn things around for you. If you'll give him a palace praise from the pit, he'll take you to the palace. There's a prophecy hidden in your praise. That's why I wouldn't want to go to no secret friendly church. I, I, I want a church where honey in that place where a whole bunch of other believers are there that got faith that I can hijack their faith all day long. And before I know it, that hijacked faith is downloading on the inside of me. And I got a praise that is shaking the mountains loose. Look at your neighbor again. There's a prophecy hidden in my praise. Come on, tell them. Your praise is dressing you for what God is going to do next. When Pharaoh called for Joseph, he was still in the prison, but he changed his clothes and he shaved himself and he got himself ready for the next level. Your praise is dressing for your next level, for your new chapter. You don't feel like getting up. You don't feel like fixing your hair. You don't feel good at all because something happens when you lose everything and you're scared to death. See, the Bible said it's a mustard seed of faith. That is the smallest seed there is. 
But so often we don't even know how to use a mustard seed of faith because the enemy is allowing our mountains to be so big in our, in our, in our eye gates that we can't even see the unthinkable, the unfathomable, the impossible because my God is a God of possible. My God is a God of thinkable. My God is a God of destroyal. My God is a God of restoration. My God is a God of redemption. But see, that mountain in our way is so big we can't even see. We're still stuck over here that things that are left. Can I tell you that your future is never tied to anybody that got up and walked out on you? Your destiny is not tied to anybody that didn't see a gift on the inside of you. Church hurt will keep you bound. Because they didn't see the call of God in your life. Maybe you needed to be here so that the gifts of, on the inside of you could have been used. Over there, there was too many people already being used. But yet you're stuck and hurt. Because what you thought should have happened didn't happen. More from Real Talk, Kim, in person here in Lima, July 14th and 15th at the Embracing God's Glory Women's Conference at In Faith Ministries. You can register online. You can call them. Um, don't delay. It's always good to do it early so they know who's coming and then be praying for others who should be coming as well. Finally, let's hear more from the host of the event, Pastor Kim Lyons, founder of Kim Lyons Ministry and author of 21 Days of Prayer Impact. She also will be speaking with some incredible things to say. Take a moment now and take a moment to listen to her. In this morning's text, we find Peter and John going to the temple uh, after their upper room experience. In chapter one, uh, Jesus, he visits them after uh, the resurrection. He, he resurrect and then he comes and he meets with his disciples and apostles. And for 40 days, he shows them infallible proofs that, that he was indeed alive and had, had a, a rose. And, and then not only that, but he talks to them. Uh, the, the text says about uh, the kingdom of God. He, he, he reinforced that, that the kingdom of God was coming. And, and being assembled together with him, he commanded them. He commanded them not to leave the city but to stay and to wait on the promise the promise the promise he said wait on the promise and the promise was in, in Acts chapter 1 that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth and so he tells them I'm getting ready to leave but I want you to wait here for the power uh, in essence, he, he's saying, I, I want you to wait here until the force is released, until the power, the ability of God is released. And so they stayed in the upper room waiting on the promise of the word from God. They waited in the upper room and, and the word of God says they were praying. Uh, they were expecting and they were waiting and they were believing, believing because how many of you know when God gives you the word, you should expect it. Oh, you should bank on it. You should count on it. You should rely on it. You should expect it. You should believe it. When God gives you a word, you should expect it to come to pass. Uh, Matthew tells us in chapter 5, For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all is fulfilled. In essence, my word is going to be fulfilled. Oh, his word is solid as a rock. Oh, when everything else appears to fail and fade in your life, you can trust in his word. You can believe his word. The word of God says that it won't, his word, it won't return back void. Oh, the word says it won't return back empty. In essence, it won't return back in your life unfulfilled. In essence, it's going to accomplish, it's going to succeed in your life, the very thing that God has purposed and ordained to take place in your life. Oh, God's word is solid as a rock. And what I've discovered is that his word moving in your life may not look like his word moving in my life. Oh, but it's working. Oh, don't be deceived because your healing in your life uh, may look a little different than the healing that's taking place in my life. Oh, don't be deceived by the word because it's working for you. Oh, your prosperity in your life, it may look different working in my life. Uh, but you best believe that God's word is working. It won't return back empty. It won't return back void. It won't return back unfulfilled. It's going to accomplish what God has purposed for your life. So don't measure the word by my life. Uh, you need to measure the word by the activity of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's word, it's working, it's working, it's 
working. And so they waited in the upper room. And the word of God says that they were on one accord. They were single-minded. And they were believing for the same experience. They were believing for the promise to come in the room. They were praying. They were waiting. They were expecting. And they were believing. And suddenly... The word of God says, a sound from heaven rushed through the room. Oh, and it was powerful. Pastor Kim Lyons, along with Dr. Medina Pullings and Real Talk Kim, ready to encourage ladies in this area, July 14th and 15th. And of course, anybody is welcome to come, not just locally. It's the Embracing God's Glory Own It Women's Conference. And there is still time for you to register. Visit InFaithMinistries.org or call 419-225-8871. And before we go, thanks to the few of you who have brought do auction donations. Unfortunately, I have to say the few of you. We've gotten some calls from others requesting auction donation pickups. Due to a very limited pickup availability with our staff, we are only able to make a few pickups. We do try to do what we can. However, it can take a few weeks for us to establish a schedule. Now, if you can get your items to us, then we can surely take them. Perhaps this is your best way to partner with TB44 financially. Maybe you're not able to donate monetarily, but you do have a high quality of items that you can donate to us. And that's a wonderful way to partner with TB44 in our annual fundraising auction, as that is an important key. It has been going on for many of our past 35 years. Your donations are accepted Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Call for other options for drop-offs or any questions you might have. There's just a few items we're unable to accept. TVs, entertainment centers, pianos, organs, books, and clothing. Now, if you have any questions about anything you might want to donate, if you have a creative idea, just give us a call at 419-339-4444 or email us at auction at WTLW.com. And that wraps up our show for this week. Next week on Faith and Friends, we introduce you to Chris Conley and the eight facets of life. Don't forget to be thankful for all things. Our 2017 Faith Challenge workout step for June. To be thankful for everything, and we surely are thankful for you. Have a great week.